uh, we've got the brushes three brushes standard brushes around 20 around 10 around six they're kind of standard off the shelf brushes but then i've got some quirky brushes that we may or may not use it's live remember i don't know we've got the brushes here we've got a a uh the new fantastic small medium large we've got a matthew palmer lift out brush and we've got some brushes for doing some detail a little bit later okay all these brushes all the brushes will end up being used at some point um, and you can see i'm working from tube color as well which is great so that's the sketch i'm gonna get stuck in in a second i've got a hair dryer floating around as well um, if you're watching this back you know it's very much a demonstration that i'm doing today so i will be working at a pretty quick pace and I want to wet the entire sheet of watercolour paper here. So basically top to bottom, okay? So a nice coverage. Pencil, this is just a 2B or not to be pencil. So I'm wetting it all. It's cotton paper. It's £140. That's bloody expensive. 300 gram, 300 gram or £140. Clarence the Lion. Does anybody remember Stanley Holloway's monologues? I don't, because I'm too young, but my dad used to love them. I think it was Clarence, Clarence the Lion or something like that. Albert and the Lion, that's it, Albert and the Lion. What's he talking about? It's full of waffle. Now, I've wet the entire sheet of paper, as you can see, uh, a couple of times because I just want to paint in the background, colours wise, I'm going to get straight in, we're going to build this thing up. I've got some kitchen roll. I normally say for when I start crying, but I already started that about half an hour ago. And what we're going to do here is go straight in to some of this natural yellow. It's a sandstone colour. Uh, we've also got some orange that I'm going to use and some of the skin tones, but first of all, natural yellow is going to feature. And I'm literally going to work a little bit by scribbling around the background very loose watercolor vignette on this picture but i'm just working central for this i'll get close in when we get towards detail and we can start to sweep some colors coming down here as well so very loose with the color pretty much covering everything even the eyes just just don't work around the eyes just go for it Big sweeps of watercolour here. This is just a single colour, very simply called natural yellow, which is very much a sandstone colour. So I'm pretty much covering everything here at this point. Working wet into wet, okay? Can't go wrong, can you? You can already smell the excitement. Yeah, there was somebody trolling the original video post, and I, and I think that fired a few alarm bells on the... Uh, on, uh, on the live stream which was which was not good okay that's that that's just that color back to the palette again what i want to do here is go for so we're a little bit late starting which means we'll be a bit later finishing well that's fine we've got natural orange bring some orange into this mixing with the yellow starting to work a little bit more precise around some of the key areas Working down the centre here. It'll grow on you. Obviously, it's not orange that we're wanting, but it's just nice to get that variation of tone. Working around. Lovely. Okay, continuing. But what I want to do here is down the brush, go for a 10 and slightly darker. So at this point, I'm introducing natural brown with natural orange. Now, again, if you've not got these colours, you can just mix your own version, if you like. But a little bit darker here um, with, with that colour. I want to get some more of that natural yellow in there as well. And I'm literally taking advantage of the paper being nice and wet here. Starting to get a little bit darker, but not necessarily all over with the darkness, just randomly in places. Now again, in that um, book I was talking about, the uh, new book, Animals in Watercolour, 
it will talk through and of course it's classic search press detail um wonderfully photographed uh, described every brushstroke described in photograph photographic detail and of course in uh, in all the stages as well so a lovely little uh, thing to pick up folks but again it is a pre-order at the minute it's not actually available yet and if you want to get yourself a signed copy posted to you head on over to watercolor tv the uh, website sort of down here no it's down there sort of here somewhere there it is and you'll see where you can get all the one of those i'm going to put a few little flicks paper's still wet it's lovely working with a nice paper like this this is cotton paper which means that the paper stays nice and wet for absolutely ages which is what you want you know it's what you want all very much a bit sort of spiritual at the minute it'll it'll grow it'll grow as we progress it's going to get a little bit more darkness coming in here because i'm starting to introduce some shadows now i'm sure this is better than watching the news but is it better than watching the chase of course it is bring it in what's the chase i don't know what the chase is bring it in. that's like my hair at the minute that's matthew's lockdown haircut at the minute <laughs> Desperate for a hair chop. Bring it down. It's lovely to work on, on paper while it's damp. It really is. It works lovely. Pop some little bits of little bits of detail. I'm gonna go a little bit darker now, folks, with the colour. So I'm actually gonna use that brown again. But I'm gonna introduce some natural grey. We've not really mentioned much about that yet. It is a shadow colour and it's a very important colour. But I want to wipe the excess off on the tissue. We can get a little bit closer in here as well for this one, just a touch, and uh, we can start to pull in some some darker colours, like inside the ears. So I'm trying to keep all this nice wet into wet background. But can you see I've gradually gone darker as I've progressed through the picture down at the back of that ear. This is a good advert for a nice paper this this is why you should always get a good quality cotton paper this particular one is the one that i have made for me it's called matthew palmer paper believe it or not um and it's um it's very much a a cotton premium surface has anybody used this who's watching the demo let me know in the comments won't you so i'm just basically working in some of the dark areas i will start to rotate the board around at this point okay so you'll start to see it, it jumping all over the place go down the back of that ear there so it's almost like a it's almost like a negative painting effect what are you doing here work across the top here there's all nice nice sort of tall hairs hanging around Of course, what we'll do on this painting is we'll make the focus about the eyes and the mouth. You've got to wait for that because that's the bit. That's the bit that makes the difference. Because that's where it really starts to pull its own way, you know? Now, I've gone really strong with that grey. You can see how thick it is here. Because I'm going to start to go in and get some dark into the mouth at this point. Now, I shall make this more intense as we progress but i want to go nice and dark in a few areas as we go through of course in them their nostrils now i'm still using a size 10 brush that's quite a big brush well i'm too lazy to reach over for a smaller brush it's a good foot and a half away quite a pointy brush this one if it wasn't There'd be no uh, wait for it. There'd be no point in using it. Bring that down. And like I say, folks, I shall blend this in. I shall be going darker. We're going to work around the eyes a little bit here as well with the shadow.
it's it's good to do as much as you can while the paper is damp with the grey. I mean, you can see that brush is quite pointy. Let's get a bit closer in. I remember we are live here, so, you know, there's no editing. You'd be surprised how many people have sent me emails saying, can't you edit them live videos that you do? The BBC can do it. There we go, bring that over. <laughs> Again, still getting quite dark. I will blend those in in a minute, but I want to go into those ears. Very strong in the ears. So that's another one of those really strong areas. Make sure things are really dark around here. Turn the board around because it's it's a bit damp and I'm always a bit scared about touching. It's not Fontaine paper, this. It's it's manufactured by Claire Fontaine, but it's not Fontaine paper. Don't get it mixed up. This is this is called Matthew Palmer paper. And a few people have made that mistake where they've ordered Fontaine paper. It's it's a version of that, but it's very different paper. So don't get them mixed up, will you? Let's make sure things are quite dark in here. Beautiful. Now what we'll do, folks, is clean the brush, wipe it on tissue, and then just with a damp brush, I'm going to soften this down. It's still damp. It's lovely that it's still it's still workable. And I can I can manipulate the paint. It's one of the great things about watercolor, you know, how you can sort of control. It. But but we can clearly see how he how he is taking shape. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm gonna continue. Continue. It's not dry yet. It's blowing a gale. I'm surprised you can't hear it. I've had to put a noise filter on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, so we've got some uh, natural brown and some natural yellow mixed together, which will give us a uh, brown and yellow. I'm going to use that with the same brush, and what I want to do is just get a little bit of movement here and there. Yeah, look at that, the paper's still damp, beautiful. Just adding a few shadows. Start to get some some length into the into those hairs, into that mane. Again, so working around. You see how that's brought that forward. Bit of a beard at the minute, but we'll work that in. Let's pull some lines down here. So this is kind of the edge of the painting, which is nice, just to bring a few little bits of long, long hairs. So again, that starts to pull that side out. It's all about creating the shape. Just picked up a bit of the gray there. And I'm going to go a little bit darker at the top here, back of that in. All this can get blended in if we need to. Yes, so I just had a question come through on, on email. Uh, it's an owl that we're doing at the workshop on Sunday, an owl. Owl in the moonlight, a barn owl. Learning some of these techniques and some new techniques, of course. That little bit on that ear, the paper's starting to dry now, so it means more blending's involved. Now, this is what you do on yours if yours were drying off. You would actually put the paint on and then blend it in. Right, I love the softness there. Now, that paper is very, very wrinkly, it's very wavy. Uh, which means I do need to be thinking about giving this thing a bit of a dry in a second. But I'm just going to pull in a few little bits of dark around here, just a couple of bits. And then I'll blend those in because the paper is very much drying at this point. Just 
bit of negative painting up the top there. Negative painting is leaving the positive shape behind. And I've dampened the brush. And then we're going to blend all this in. Just using water. But I did give it a tap on tissue before I did the blending here. So you can see how, it, how nice and simple it is. Now, you saw some of the paintings, what I were doing previously um, at the start of this, this demo. And they're very detailed, but you know, they were done at my own leisure. Not so much as a demonstration. Demonstrations are very different, of course, because demonstrations are, you know, you, you're conscious, you're conscious that people are, are watching and potentially getting a bit bored. Because if we're being honest, it is a bit like watching paint dry in it. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of, you know, it's 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 thinking about that at the same time. Let's go darker down here. So you tend to work a little bit looser, a little bit freer when you do a a demo which is sometimes not a bad thing. All the time, I'm just going to wash that bit off. That's where my hand keeps going on. Nice and dry folks. Now what I've done is I've also kind of flattened it down a little bit as well at the same time, um, which is a good thing because it means we can sort of keep it nice and uh, nice and flat. And there we go. We've got that 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 could sort of starting point of uh, Clarence the line. Now we'll get close into this. We can see how it's starting to take a little bit of shape. We're now going to use a number six brush and pretty much use the same colours, with one exception, a couple of exceptions, the nose and the eyes. So nice and close in here. Um, I've got a colour over here, which is light, light skin tone. We're gonna to use some light skin tone here. And we've also got some dark skin tone as well. So light and dark skin tone. Both of those colours are gonna to work together. We've got the light skin tone first, and we're gonna pop in some colour with a number six brush over the top of this nose here. And we'll take some dark skin tone. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of that just to give some variation. So now while that is a little bit on the damp side, using that good strong natural grey that we mentioned, We can make sure it's really quite dark at the bottom. Get a few spots hanging around here and there. So that's using that, that really strong grey that we spoke about a little bit earlier. And also we're going to go darker and cleaner inside the mouth area as well. And really, really quite dark grey. Now natural grey is made from primary colours, so it's a very definite grey. Inside those nostrils there. Bring it out. Nice clean brush. And then we're going to soften that down a touch. Again, just focusing more on what's on those areas. So we're getting some real strength of colour. coming around those areas. Don't be afraid. Move the dark. So 
So I'm basically just going back into those key areas, like the eyes, the mouth, etc. And bringing that nice bit of shape into it. Lovely. It's going to also be quite dark in here as well. A little bit on the edge of the ear as well. Bit of water just to encourage that to disappear. Nice. And then of course on this side, just a few little bits of darkness coming in. Just around the edge of the ear. It's nice to uh, when you start to bring dark in because that's where the picture really starts to get that little bit of oomph about it, you know. Now, if we have a quick look at the palette, um, this kind of browny colour here, so it's actually a mixture of that natural yellow with the brown. And I'll pop a bit of grey into it. But it's not quite as dark as grey on its own, but it's still um, a fairly dark colour because I need to get some shape and form around this area at this point. It's kind of there, but it's not strong enough for the picture. So I'm working in some of these key areas. I'm just using water. So the paper's nice and dry, so I'm working uh, wet on dry, wet brush, dry paper. And I'm just using water with a couple of spots on tissue because you don't want too much water when you blend in or it's on dry just want to keep it nice and nice and clean there a little bit darker down here as well so starting to really build up shadows Not being afraid to go in with the dark. Because as we all know, it's the dark that makes these things work. And literally, I'm water, quick spot on tissue, and then that's enough for me to blend. If I spike the brush a little bit, or actually if I use one of these, these fan brushes, these are lovely for this. Look at these beautiful brushes here. Gorgeous. Let's get close into this because you can really start to pull in some detail here. You get some lovely, nice for whiskers as well. When we we'll get to those a little bit later, but you can start to pull in some nice random texture. So this is called the Matthew Palmer Fantastic. This is the small one, and it's just going to be lovely. So I'm just using some grey at this point, and what I'm doing is creating that nice bit of sort of realism in the fur. Giving a little bit of extra it's like a random fan brush when I designed these brushes a couple of years ago it was the animal portraits were the thing I wanted to make more than anything And of course, we'll bring in some other colours as well. You know, this is just the next stage. Okay. So, uh, quite a nice... Quite a nice effect here.
And of course I can bring in any other colours with these brushes. And I'm actually sharpening up some areas as I do this at the same time. So I've just mixed up some orange and some um, natural yellow at that point. And I'm literally just darting around this thing. Make it all nice and loose. Now, obviously, we've not got to the eyes yet. That's going to make a big difference putting the eyes in. And I'm blending that little shadow there. Watercolor is dead easy to rework, of course. Close into the mouth here, we're going to bring in a touch more colour around here. So that's back to the orange and the yellows, and then wet that area, blend it in. Because what you're going to get here is little tiny spots where the the whiskers are. And these are always nice to put in a, an animal picture. Little tiny dots. Now because the painting, because it's damp, it's obviously going to spread, which is exactly what you want it to do here. So. So it's now onto those key areas, and obviously that's going to be eyes, nose and mouth, because that's the focal point of a picture like this. But there's just randomly scattered around, there's just little tiny bits of detail, little markings, a few scrapes and scratches, a few wrinkles here and there. This chap's got some character, he has. So I want to drop in little bits of dark on these edges, like the nose for example. Little, just little tiny bits of the darkness, wherever we feel the need. Works every time. Slightly pinch the brush here, just to bring in some, oh I could use that fan brush, but just that little bit of texture, just kind of weaving in that area there. It's all kind of making this a focal point. There he is. I think he's less of a Clarence now. He's more of a... A Leo, yes, he's more of a Leo. Actually, my mum's a, uh, a Leo, so she might like this. So don't forget, folks, to get those pre-orders in for that book, um, and I will show you again at the end for those people that are interested. That's the animals in watercolour. You can pick it up from Search Press of course or you can buy it from um, Watercolour TV which you'll get a signed signed and numbered version if you if that's of interest to you. Um, it's not officially released yet, it's not actually out until um, late Feb, early March so but as soon as it turns up on the shores and it lands here at the warehouse we'll get it sent out to you of course we will
and uh, you can enjoy it. 32, 32 projects in watercolours to enjoy. I'm going to turn that around a little bit here, folks, because I want to go darker around here and use a bit of water to smooth that paint away. I love that when you put those beautiful shadows in. This is an Australian um, line, which you don't see many of, but there's one here. We've never seen one before. I want to pop a little bit of shadow Pop a little bit of shadow down here. And down there as well. It really is. I've always said for years, you know, painting is like Tesco's. Now, if you're not from the UK, you might not know what Tesco's is. It's a, it's, is it the biggest supermarket chain? Probably. Um, and the reason I say painting is like Tesco's, it's because every little helps. And that's, that's no more true than an animal. And an animal, you know, always going to be the case. Look at that hair. Probably about the same look. Let's just... Uh... Tidy up a few areas here and there. Almost ready for those eyes. Beautiful. Excellent. Okay, let's get close into those eyes. But I mean, so far, we have this wonderful sort of vignette style background. I'm really taking a nice bit of shape there. So really pleased with how that's how that's kind of coming out um, today. So I'm just going to bring in some uh, some work onto those eyes. Now, the eyes of the big cats are very different to your domestics. Um, there's not a huge amount of colour. You get like a bit of a sort of burnt sienna kind of color now i want to use dark skin tone for this but you could use a pale burnt sienna for that mix it with a bit of orange um but it doesn't want a huge amount of color here the background color is not a million miles off what it actually is now a domestic cat of course has the sort of classic sort of um almost like a sort of slit whereas your big cats, your snow leopards, your tigers, your lions have more of a round sort of eye. Um, but what we do first is we put a wash of this colour on. Now this is this, this is dark skin tone, but very diluted on both, of course. Put that colour on first. Use a bit of water. Blend it in. So it's got that slight sort of pink tinge to it, which is nice because it, it stands out quite well. And then what we do, the most important thing and something people forget about is the shadow is always going to be a shadow across the top of the eye. And that's cast. That's the same as your eyes as well. Cast because the light's coming down. It puts the shadow and then we get a good strong bit of that grey. Now, like I say, I'm using natural grey, which is very much a cold grey. And we're going to drop in the actual eye, the pupil. Which is like a very sort of almost like a little like elliptical soft shape just yeah now yes i shall put the highlights on as well but that wants to be quite strong for the minute Now 
Nice. While that's drying off for a second, let's come down to the nose here. Because what I want to do here is do a little bit of clean up. And just do a little bit of paint removal. I've actually removed some of that, that colour and making sure that the darkness inside nicely blends as well. Lovely. And then just dragging a few individual lines coming out of the mouth there. And some texture. I could use the fan brush here as well. Sorry, you can't see that. I'm just I'm just dragging some colour. In a few areas. Just a few random areas of, of, of dark. Lovely. Beautiful. Now onto the eyes then. Um, I'm going to pop a few um, highlights around the picture um, very soon, but I just want to get some white paint. Um, so I'm using some, uh, some like gouache or something similar. Now I want to pop this on a scrap piece of paper because I do tend to um, forget whites in the palette. So a little bit of white would be quite effective here. Uh, brush wise, here, I've got a branch and detail brush, which I'm going to mix into the white. Branch and detail brush. Again, it's another one of my own brushes. It's a beautiful detailer. It's up to you whether you want to use, you know, this or something, something different. And of course, we'll pop the highlight in the eye, which is always going to make a difference. Instantly brings it alive. Uh, we are nice and close in, which is great because I like to pop a little bit of light and it depends how much of a line you can get out of the brush. I like to pop a little bit of light in some of the corners of the eyes. For me, it just brings the whole thing alive. So well done for those people that have stuck around. I know a few people have drifted off, but well done for those who have stuck around because when the white comes into play, same as on the nose as well, that little bit of sort of shine that you get on the cat's nose is always good. Beautiful. And even down here, look, little bits of individual gorgeous brushes. Look at those little bits of, not whiskers, but you know, that little bits of fair. Uh, lions don't have big whiskers, <laughs> just a few. And I, I, I'm just gonna use this. I'm just gonna use this brush because it's loaded up ready. I could save myself a job here and use the fan brush, but uh, because I'm loaded, I'm gonna use this here and pop some whiskers in. Try and flick off at the end. Can I say flick off on an afternoon? Probably not, probably not. But I love that little bit just on the edge there. It's lovely just to see how you can really get light in and even just a few little hints. On some of those corners it just makes a feature let's have a look at the eyes again look how beautiful they look stunning on the eyes no matter how many time i've painted animal pictures it's always the eyes without a question that do it and it's it's nine times out of ten it's gonna be the last thing that you do no that sounds quite dramatic the last thing that you paint <laughs> that's better no, that sounds even worse. The last thing you paint on the picture of the animal that you're doing. I know what I meant. Let's just pop a few little bits on the corners. 
so yeah well done for sticking around folks because it's um it's it's difficult but you have to finish your painting i think that most people get that um but some people you know kind of sort of realize if you've not if the picture's not working for yourself you know as maybe as a beginner i don't know what level you are obviously but it's always going to be these last bits that make it and that's that's no more true than if you're doing something like a an animal so you've always got to finish off your picture it's so easy to put in a few highlights here and there look just to give some extra detail which is good Few extra whiskers here and there. A little bit on the edge of that ear. These little bits of white. Make it look crisper. Just a touch more on the nose. A few little flicks of white around there as well. Now these sorts of paintings always look nice, you know, with that that sort of vignette style edge. And I've always been quite a big fan of 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 that sort of style. Always enjoyed it. And I think on a picture like this, it would equally look nice with a nice frame around it as well. Um, so a good signature sort of somewhere in the corner would look quite good. Let's get close into them eyes. Let's just look at them and let's go into a trance. Look around the eyes, not into the eyes. Let's have a close up look at this thing. Let's come back here, love the eyes. Then we'll sort of have a look at the mouth. I'll look at the mouth area, the detail in the mouth, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Love it. And then we'll come back to the whole thing. So there you go, animals in watercolor. I really do hope you enjoyed watching that picture being cre created live, live here from Derbyshire on a wet and windy day.